Have you ever seen an open example like this? And thought, that's weird, wouldn't it make more sense to use chain stratagem here? After all, the sooner you use the damage boost for your raid, the sooner they can benefit, and thus, they will benefit the most. Right? Before I get too deep in this optimization talk, I just want to clarify that you do not need to play perfectly to participate in even the hardest content. What comes first is mastering the mechanics of a fight, then comes damage, and often, you will be far from perfecting that by the time you beat the encounter. Anyway, back on topic. In an optimized group, like what you might expect in a savage raid team, what you often might call a static, you need to squeeze out every single point of damage you can, and normally, using your best cooldowns immediately is the logical move. But what if delaying it by about 8 seconds just once would increase the damage it does by 10%? Every time! Sometimes, this number might be even bigger, depending on the group composition. But this is the general reasoning for why you might want to delay your biggest button some seconds at the start of a fight. Now, why is it exactly that most optimized openers tend to tell you to wait around 7 to 8 seconds, typically around 3 global cooldowns? This is because while some jobs are completely ready to roll out with full power at a moment's notice, healers and summoners come to mind, most jobs take a little bit to get ready. This can be because you have so many buffs that you have to apply that you have to space it out over several GCDs, like the Bard, Dancer and Dragoon. It could also be because your damage buff is associated with a specific step in a combo, like Monk, Samurai, Warrior and again Dragoon. Many of these get going within two GCDs and some can get going in a single GCD in some capacity. Additionally, while some jobs have the ability to start from zero, they benefit greatly from having those three extra GCDs to prepare. But, specifically the warrior, and only the warrior, is genuinely incapable of starting any faster than in three GCDs. It takes three GCDs to apply Surging Tempest on single target, Mithril Tempest does not count. And so, waiting until after around 7 or 8 seconds before you start on the big burst is like a standardization that enables you to perfect your rotation in a way that works equally well regardless of group composition. Fun fact, back in Shadowbringers, some jobs could take over 5 GCDs to get going, so the fact that so many jobs now can start from zero or be fine with just a few GCDs of preparation is an incredible blessing. Now. This fact that most jobs can optimize around liftoff at 7 or 8 seconds does not mean that a faster opener is completely wrong or does not have its time in the sun. If you play alone, or your group does not actually have any buffs for each other, then you might well benefit more from using your cooldowns as fast as possible. It should be stated that a balanced raid team with 8 unique jobs can't not have a single raid buff among them, as there exists only 3 DPS jobs with no raid buffs. In a less coordinated raid group, more common in easier content, as well as in low level content, you may find that players aren't or perhaps can't use their cooldowns at the correct time you could say. I should stress immediately that this is not something to worry about and playing perfectly is not a requirement in these scenarios. Some jobs may not even have learned their buffs yet and a pull with no pull timer can easily confuse. If you cannot trust that the cooldowns you expect are coming out on time, then you may benefit from assuming that you're playing solo and thus make the most of your actions on your own abilities alone. For that reason, the winging it rotation as some may call it is not without its merit, sometimes. However, in the scenario where everyone is playing perfectly, the power difference is enormous. See, if everyone knows that Chain Stratagem, for instance, is coming out 8 seconds into the fight and then on cooldown, then they can plan around the fact that Chain Stratagem appears 8 seconds in, 2 minutes and 8 seconds in, and so on. If everyone in your party aligns a certain 2 minute cooldown, whether it is a buff or an attack they follow with immediately after a buff, with the same exact 2 minute clock, then you only have to delay your big button once to gain the full benefit of this delay, every time. Let's take an example, let's say you are a samurai and you happen to have a raid team that all have been handpicked to optimize your opener. Your team consists of a red mage, a dancer, a dragoon and of course a scholar and an astrologian. Your tanks aren't that important, but mainly they're not dark knights because they would take priority on the melee cards from astrologian. 
Let us focus on this particular Hisats Sene for this demonstration. It fills the boxes on the thing we talked about before. A 2 minute cooldown that benefits maximally from damage buffs of all sorts. Midari Setsugeka being a guaranteed critical hit causes multiple of these handpicked buffs to be redundant in comparison. For this demonstration, we have a full set of crafted gear, item level 580, with materia following the priority critical hit, determination, direct hit. We are also in the 2.14 GCD range. This gives us these stats right out the gate. We also count the Fugetsu buff for another 13%. For comparison, I will convert all damage bonuses into potency increases on Hisat's Sene, and I will use the average damage gain from critical hits and direct hits as additional damage bonuses. This also includes critical direct hits, of course. I will call this a converted average potency. For this example, we should be able to expect a converted average potency of about 1261 about 58% more damage. When we add all of the buffs, Red Mages Embolden, Dancer's Standard and Technical Step, as well as Devilment, Dragoon's Dragon Sight and Battle Litany, Scholar's Chain Stratagem, as well as Astrologian's Divination and of course a melee card, we get a much more imposing set of bonuses when these are all multiplied together. Our converted average potency now is 2174, which is not only 172% more potency than the base value, it is also 72% more than what we could perform alone. This, simply put, means that by waiting around 5 extra seconds with using his Sene, you could stand to gain 72% more damage from that single attack. This of course also applies to all of the moves you follow up with within the next 15 to 20 seconds. The Higanbana dot, Okinamikiri, although its guaranteed crits mean it benefits less, and so on and so forth. Also, a significant portion of these buffs apply to the whole raid, so each individual small buff stacks together to produce one very large damage buff. So, to answer the question of why optimized savage raid teams delay their big cooldowns around 7 to 8 seconds into a fight, well, it is the shortest amount of time they could all agree on. But despite that, a more front-loaded opener and rotation can still be beneficial in smaller group content or in groups that are uncoordinated. Just to show you a bit more detail, here is a demonstration of four of the openers relevant to the example I posed before. We will showcase the samurai itself alongside its three DPS companions. The two healers have relatively open ways to use their cooldowns on time, so I do not imagine you need proof that they can deliver. The samurai will perform Gekko, Kasha and Yugi Kase, followed by Midari Setsugeka and Weaving Sene. This gives the rest of the team around 8.5 seconds before Sene arrives. The Red Mage pre-casts the Thunder and dual casts the Aero, and then prepares two instant casts of the Thunder immediately followed by Embolden, around the 8 second mark. The Dragoon goes through its True Thrust, Disembowel and Chaotic Spring, applying Dragon Sight and Battle Litany just before and just after Chaotic Spring respectively. This means that Battle Litany should be there around 8 seconds in. Finally, the Dancer prepares the standard finish and then leads with that into Technical Step and Weaving Devilment right after the Technical Finish. Once again, the Devilment lands just around the 8 second mark. If you are wondering why the Samurai does not start with the attack speed buff from Kasha, it is because the delay of around 0.4 seconds caused by deliberately not doing so gives the other jobs better room to prepare their buffs in time. I hope you found this deeper dive into openers and teamwork inspiring. Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more guides and hopefully inspiring content from me in the future, you can subscribe to get notified whenever I put up a new video. And. If you have any questions or anything to add, please leave a comment down below. Fun fact, in Endwalker, most raid buff related abilities were normalized to a 2 minute cooldown. In fact, Ninja's trick attacks raid buff got moved to Mug to further normalize this trend. Before Endwalker, raid buffs were all over the place. 60 seconds, 90 seconds, even 180 seconds. On the plus side, it is easier to learn now. On the minus side, the old ways may have felt more unique.